You just got two job offers. One job pays more money, the other job pays less money, but could be a better opportunity. Which job do you choose? Hey, do me a favor, just like and subscribe. So the first thing you need to understand is that from the company's perspective, they want to get as much work out of you for as little money as possible. This is just good business. The only reason you're gonna get a job is that you're going to make more money for the company than you're going to cost. Let's say you're fresh out of college. Crap Tech just offered you $85,000 for a junior developer position. But Super Tech offered you $70,000 for a junior developer position, but it's a technology you're more interested in and they say there's more opportunity there. Do you take Crap Tech's offer or Super Tech's offer? Now let's just assume that Crap Tech and Super Tech both offer the same 401k benefits, the same vacation benefits, the same health benefits. So we're just talking about salary. One thing I've learned is that companies that pay you 10% less don't work you 10% less. No engineering manager has ever said, well, we are paying him 10% less, so let's give him 10% more time. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. There's also the question of respect. Money is respect. Companies that pay you less tend to respect you less. Companies that pay you more tend to respect you more. Now, the company offering less might say, well, you'll have more responsibilities, you'll wear more hats. But if you take excuses instead of money, excuses are all you're going to get when pay raises or promotions come around. Also keep in mind, if a company can't come up with $15,000 to match a salary, what does that say about the financial state of the company or the mindset of the executives that work there? Now, don't get me wrong. I know some people have a budget and they have to stick to that budget, but that isn't your problem. That's their problem. Now, there are some exceptions. If you're looking at a government or education job and they have a pension, the lower salary might be worth the long-term pension. And if you're at a startup, that's a different situation too. You might accept less money for more responsibility or interesting technology or unlimited upside. But if an established company lowballs you, how are they gonna treat you in the long-term? Also be wary of bonuses. Bonuses are not guaranteed. And some companies will try to give you a lower salary with the opportunity of a higher bonus. Bonuses always work in the company's favor. They can lure you in with the promise of a bonus and then not pay it to you. Or if they do pay it to you, you've just missed out on one whole year of interest payments that you could have gotten if you had just gotten that money as salary. One final thing. The salary at your next company is going to be based on the salary at your current company. So if you're taking that job at Supertech for $70,000, but after two years, you're probably making 73. If you had taken the job at Craptech for 85,000, you're gonna be making 88,000 after a couple of years. The job at Craptech where you started at 85 and finished at 88 puts you in striking distance of that gold standard of 100K developer job. That's a middle-class life. This may not seem important now, but in a couple of years, you may want to get married, start a family, buy a house, and that 100K salary is going to help you out a lot. Now, maybe you have a passion for a technology that Supertech is using, and that's great, but maybe the industry just isn't mature enough to support a higher salary. If you're a good engineer, opportunities are going to come to you. Concentrate on being a good engineer. Education benefits can be kind of fuzzy too. Let's say that Supertech says, hey, we'll pay for your master's degree, but you have to work for us an extra two years. Well, if you take Supertech's offer, then now you're gonna have a master's degree and you're gonna be more marketable, but you're still working for Supertech earning less money. Whereas if you had worked at Crap Tech and paid for the darn master's degree yourself, you'd be free to go wherever you want. Not much of a deal, is it? One final thing, if you have some kind of passion and you'd really rather work at a nonprofit to follow your passion, then follow your passion. You will make less money, but you will be happier. So I'd say the cutoff is about $5,000. If the company you want to work at is within $5,000 of the company that's offering you more money, fine, work at the company that you want to work at. But if the salary difference is extreme, I would almost always go for the company offering you more money. Now let's get out there and start turning software code into dollars. Hey all you crappy developers, I want you to gather around. I would like to introduce you to the newest member of the Crap Tech team, Ryan. He just joined the Visual Basic 6 team. Wait, what?